Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have an MMQA. Oh, yeah. We got loads of questions. We got lots of eye candy. So I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right. Starting with the first question. How you handle luxury judgment is always interesting. Sometimes family and friends have a lot to say about how other people spend their money. I couldn't agree more. Now, my response is always going to be the same, whether it's a stranger, a friend, or a family member. Now, I know that might sound pretty harsh, but just hear me out. When a stranger is criticizing you or being judgmental about the things that you like, I mean, who cares, right? It's a stranger. But when it comes to friends and family, I can definitely understand that that can be a lot harder to ignore. It can hit closer to home, especially if it's someone that you have a very strong bond with and someone that you trust. I completely understand that. But I think that when it comes to the point of those of those family members of, or those friends being critical, being judgmental, and just kind of harping on you over and over and over again, that's where that response, again, is going to be the same, which is you do you and I do me. I don't care if it's a friend. I don't care if it's a family member. I don't care if it's a stranger. Uh, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go toe to toe with them. I'm not going to try to make them understand because as you guys have heard me say before, I think that sometimes people, regardless of what you tell them, they're going to believe what they're going to believe. They're going to hold on to that belief so strongly that you can tell them, you could, I mean, you could be telling them the exact opposite of what they think and it still doesn't matter. So I will never l waste my time trying to defend the things that I like just so I can make someone else feel better about it. I mean, friends and family should be supportive. They should be understanding. They shouldn't criticize. They shouldn't be judgmental, but that's not always the case. That's not always the reality. Now, don't get me wrong. I have had friends and family in my life who have tried to make me look like an asshole in front of other friends and family because of what I buy. And I mean, they'll just sit there, you know, if we're at a family function, at a reunion or what have you, and they're just like, oh my God, I can't believe this. I can't believe you buy these bags, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what you could do with that money? I, I mean, I have heard it all. I have heard it all. I just laugh. I laugh because like I said before, I'm not going to sit there and go toe to toe with you and try to defend what I like. I like what I like. Either you get it or you don't. That's not my problem. If you get it, that's great. If you don't, then <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. That's when I turn to them and I'm like, dude, you do you and I do me. If thinking that makes you sleep better at night, then, then go for it. I don't care. You know, I just, <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't care if it's someone that I am close with because I feel like that same closeness, they should be respectful. That's what it comes down to. It comes to being respectful, especially if someone's not asking for your opinion. If you're giving your unsolicited advice to someone, especially if you're trying to make them feel bad about it, it's like, that's where, sorry, it's, it's, it's a no-go. I'm not going to try to make you feel better and make you understand what I like and, and defend it. Absolutely not. Because of the, re the, because of the relationship that we have, you should be more understanding and more supportive. Because if you think about it, every single person, at least I think, every single person has some kind of hobby. Some people are all about bags. Some people are all about golfing. Some people are all about exotic cars, about watches. I feel like every single person has a hobby. Every single person has an interest that they like to, uh, that they like to spend money on, that they like to spend time on. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter. It, it, it shouldn't even come down to, to the dollar amount. It should just come down to if they enjoy it, let them enjoy it. Who cares? Who cares what anybody says? Whether it is family, friends, or a stranger. You don't owe an explanation to anybody. I get this question asked so many times, and I, I really don't want to sound like a broken record, but you don't have to defend your purchases to anybody. Why? Why? If someone's giving you shit on social media, who cares? Just let it in one ear and out the other because you are enjoying it. Don't let someone try to take that joy away from you. Why? Why would you give them the satisfaction? No. You know, everyone has an interest. Everyone has a hobby. And just because one might be thousands of dollars and another might be hundreds of dollars, it doesn't, it doesn't negate the fact that we should be supportive of one another and just be respectful of what that person enjoys and leave it at that. As I've said before, there is a fantastic community on here. 
that gets it, that gets the crazy, that gets why we like packages and pretty ribbon and pretty boxes. And there's, there's so many people out there that get it. You know, it is a bummer when you have a family member or a friend that you are close to that doesn't get it and feels the need to make you feel bad about what you enjoy or tries to make you feel like you're an idiot for spending that amount of money on an item. Um, and I, I mean, I can see how relationships can definitely be strained because of that, but just don't let anyone, don't let anyone ever dull your flame or dull your joy when it comes to whatever you enjoy, be it bags, be it thimbles, be it crocheting. I don't care what it is. If you enjoy it, you keep doing you and just ignore everybody else. So that was, uh, <laughs> that's how I feel about, uh, about when other people, what other people think. Don't entertain it. You do you. Always. You do you. Next question. Do you still use your Palm Springs Mini? Do you think the hype is gone for that bag? All right. So here I have my Palm Springs Mini backpack. Still love it. Still enjoy it. And I honestly don't see this bag leaving my collection anytime soon or at all for that matter. Not only because I really enjoy it, but it also has quite a bit of sentimental value for me. Uh, so uh, I'm a big, 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 big fan of the Palm Springs Mini Backpack. Uh, I love the size that it has. It's not too big. It's not too small. It packs a punch. It's carefree. It's a great travel bag. And I really like the fact that you have multiple ways of being able to carry it. So it makes it very, very versatile. So um, I, I think it's great. Has the hype died down on this bag? Uh, I mean, it's not at the height of an it bag as it was maybe three or four years ago. Uh, I still see it quite a bit. And I think that this bag has a very, a very strong following, especially because of the things that I mentioned that I enjoy about it. So I think that those who really enjoy this bag, uh, it'll be on constant rotation. It'll, it'll be a bag that they constantly end up, uh, you know, posting or talking about on social media. So again, it might not be at the height that it was of an it bag three, four, five years ago. Uh, but I don't see this bag completely phasing out and sizzling out by any means whatsoever. I remember that I thought that this bag was going to die down. I thought that the love for this bag was going to die down four years ago. And I still think it's, it's going pretty strong again, not as strong as before, but it's still there. Oh yeah. The love is definitely still there. So, <laughs> uh, I think it's a great little bag. I actually had someone ask me the other day if they thought it was too late to add this, uh, the Palm Springs mini to their collection. Absolutely not. And that goes for any and all bags. If you see a bag that you, that you can see yourself enjoying, that you can see yourself uh, adding to your collection or because you love it or whatever the case may be, it's never too late to add a bag to any collection by any means whatsoever. So the Palm Springs mini, still love it, still enjoy it. And as I said, that sentimental value always um, makes my heart flutter every time that, uh, that I use that bag. Uh, all right, next question. What is the newest jewelry you purchased? Um, fancy schmancy jewelry? None. <laughs> I haven't purchased any. I did purchase some costume jewelry that I don't think I shared with you guys. I could be wrong, uh, but I did unbox them on Instagram and uh, they are a pair of, hang on, of Louis Vuitton earrings. These are the Louis Vuitton iconic uh, studs. Here, hold on, let me do one at a time. Makes it a little bit easier. There we go. So these guys are available in uh, silver as well as gold and they also have these in silver and gold with the crystals. Obviously, I opted against the crystals because, let's be honest, I haven't had the best success when it comes to crystals on costume jewelry, and I really didn't want to have to go through that whole ordeal. Uh, but I really like the simplicity of these. I think that they're beautiful. They're not, um, they're not uncomfortable. They're not heavy. They are pretty, I mean, they feel kind of hollow. Um, Sometimes when I when I wear these and um, they end up covering up the E, which I'm personally not too crazy about uh, for obvious reasons, uh, but they uh, they're still pretty they're pretty comfortable. Like I said, they're not heavy whatsoever. They don't give me a headache uh, because they are so lightweight. But I love the simplicity that they have. Absolutely beautiful. So I got those bad boys. I want to say it's probably been maybe two and a half two and a half months, maybe three months, <laughs> something like that. I don't know, but uh, that was the latest costume jewelry purchase. And then it's, and then they have Louis Vuitton on the very bottom. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see it, uh, but right there. So 
Love, love, love these. Okay, next question. Best slash favorite micro bag you own? Uh, okay, so I do have four micro bags in my collection. The two Paul Lens that you guys have seen, the Longchamp, and then uh, the latest, which is the uh, Aspinall of London, the Nano Mayfair. And out of those four, I love them all. I love them all for different reasons. But the best, my favorite, has definitely got to be the Aspinall of London, the Nano Mayfair in the Burgundy. I... I love this bag. Now, I know I haven't had it as long as some of the other ones, but there's just something about it. I don't know if it's the details that it has. I don't know if it's the Croc and Boz leather that just kind of makes my eyes drool, but I, I love this bag. I think that it's functional. Uh, I've used it as a lipstick catch-all, as I said in the, um, in the uh, box or the reveal video. Uh, so I have used it that way, uh, but like I said, it's functional, so you can use it as a wallet, as a catch-all, as a lipstick carrier. Uh, you can use it as a bag charm on your bigger bags. Uh, you can use it as a little belt bag. I mean, I feel like it has so many different uh, possibilities, and it is just ridiculously cute. It has a working pocket back here. I mean, it's awesome. It's absolutely amazing. I love, love, love the attention to detail. Now, there are some micro bags out there that I think are adorable, but I don't think that they're, they're, they're definitely not as functional as I would like them to be, especially for some of the price points that they have. Uh, so this to me has a friendlier price point and it has a whole lot of detail um, that you would expect it to have a higher price point. Uh, but the quality is amazing. So far, I am absolutely floored with um, with Aspinall, Aspinall of London. I, I think that they're great. But this guy definitely takes the cake. And let me just open it up there so you guys can see. It's small, but I know I say it all the time. i got to come up with a different thing. But it really does pack a punch. <laughs> absolutely. And here's the chain that it comes with. It has two different uh, or three different chains. So that way you can use it as a bag charm or as a little as a little bag. I mean, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So the Aspinall of London Nano Mayfair. Uh, all right, next question. If you lost your whole collection, God forbid, <laughs> and had to start over, what will be your first bag? Uh, I would have to say the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damien Azor, uh, for sure. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I love all the bags that I have in my collection. Uh, I love them for, for different reasons. But the Neverfull to me is like, it, it's, it's, it's like me in a bag. It's comfortable, you know, it's, it, it holds everything that I need. It's very casual. Uh, it's a tote, it's spacious. It's, I mean, I feel like I can go on and on and on, which I won't because obviously I've done like a hundred million reviews and videos on the Neverfull in the, in the 10 billion years that I've been on YouTube. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not going to give you guys an earful, but it would definitely have to be the Neverfull just because it is so functional and so perfect for my lifestyle that I can't, I really can't imagine, um, not having it. So that would be the first one that I would have to start with. And I wouldn't buy a new one. I would buy the old one because I have the old ones uh, with the flowered interior and the cursive writing. Uh, so I would, I would buy a, one from the same year that I got it. So definitely. Next question. So what's your all time favorite bag out of your massive collection? This was, this was a tough one because I, there are some bags that I use more than others. Uh, there are some that have more sentimental value than others, and there are some that are more functional that, than others. So, you know, I kind of look at everything, and we all know it's very difficult for me to pick just the one, <laughs> right? But there is no runner-up. There is no second place, although there are many that are, like, right there. Uh, my favorite bag, my all-time favorite bag out of my collection has definitely got to be the Chanel Medium Large and the black caviar with the silver hardware. Uh, not only does it have loads of sentimental value, but it's also a very functional bag for my lifestyle. It's very comfortable, uh, easy to dress up and dress down. It fits all of my essentials and then some. 
And um, yeah, I, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this handbag whenever I use it, and it's one that I reach for often. Uh, so I would have to say that this is at the top of the list for sure. The Chanel Medium Large and the Black Caviar. Aren't you guys proud of me? I actually picked just the one. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that, but trust me, it took a little bit for me to, to sit here and think about which one it was going to be. Uh, all right, next question. Show a color on a handbag you will never buy and why? I'm not going to say never because I have learned my lesson when it comes to never. Uh, but I will say that I don't foresee myself ever getting a purple handbag or a Barney purple handbag at that. Uh, purple, it's, it's kind of crazy because I did enjoy the color purple when I was younger, but I don't know. It's just, it just, it really it doesn't really do anything for me at this point in time. Um, yeah, I don't, um... <laughs> <laughs> any kind of purple I can appreciate it on others and I think that purple especially with gold hardware champagne gold hardware it does look beautiful uh, so it's not like I'm the type of person that like oh just because I don't like it doesn't mean I can't appreciate an aspect of it definitely not uh, but just for myself it's it's never been a color in my adult age that I really gravitate towards at all I don't I don't have any purple SLGs either so, um, I mean, I kind of changed my mind when it came to blue, when it came to orange, and um, even green. Well, green I've always been a big fan of. But uh, purple is, is definitely one that I don't really see myself ever going for. Uh, but who knows? I mean, can you imagine if in six months' time I have, like, this rad purple bag that I'm all, check this out. I don't know. But uh, purple. But what about you guys? What is a color on a handbag that you will never buy or that you don't ever see yourself adding to your collection? Let us know in the comment section down below. Uh, all right, next question. How long can you go without using a bag before you feel guilty? I struggle with this. Um, I really, I really don't feel guilty when it comes to a handbag that ends up sitting on my shelf for a long period of time. Um, but I do like to... I do like to take it out for a spin occasionally, but I would have to say about the six month, nine month mark right around there is when I feel like I kind of sometimes discover it and I'm like, oh, I haven't used this bag in a while. Oh, I'm going to use this bag. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't feel guilty. I don't because I'm sure that at one point in time I used that bag quite a bit. Now I'm giving a chance to another bag to have its, its moment in the sun, if you will. Uh, so it's when I, <laughs> it's when I come across it and uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't used this bag in a little bit. But around the six month to the ninth month mark is when I usually, um, I'll bring it out for a spin. And if it's a bag that after that spin I don't enjoy, that's when I start to entertain. Maybe it's time that I end up letting it go. Uh, so that's, um, that's about the time frame for me. Next question. What do you think about the rising prices for vintage Chanel bags, quality and or demand? Both. Definitely both. Although I feel like there has always been a group of people that always gravitate towards vintage Chanel, especially because they are bags that have since been discontinued and you don't see them too often. They tell a story uh, and the quality, uh, especially the hardware was very different uh, on the vintage bags than, than what you see now. So uh, I definitely feel that it's a little bit of both. I think that with the rising prices of what you see at the Chanel boutiques has really caused people to look at the vintage market in all aspects of luxury, not just Chanel, uh, but uh, definitely it's a little bit of both, you know, because again, I feel like when you have, I mean, you can see some of these Chanel bags that are like 25, 30 years old. They're in lambskin and they have the 24 karat gold plated hardware. Uh, and the fact that they have the age that they have and they look the way that they do, I think speaks volumes to the quality that the bags had before than what you end up seeing now. I'm not saying that what you see now is trash. I'm not saying that either. Uh, but I definitely feel it's infinitely different from what you saw before. Uh, again, across all, uh, across all luxury houses, uh, fashion houses. So yeah, it's, it's crazy because if you get a for example a jumbo or a medium large what are they now like nine thousand dollars or eleven th i don't even know like eleven grand you see the vintage ones that used to be like twenty five hundred thirty five hundred now you see them for you know five six thousand i've seen some for seven thousand uh but it's just it's so it's so wonderful to see some of those vintage bags as i said previously that have the age that they have and they look amazing they look absolutely 
amazing. So vintage Chanel bags are, I think, are definitely always uh, in, uh, in style for sure, uh, or always in demand. Uh, all right, next question. How is the leather wearing on your puzzle bags? I'm worried about the durability. All right, so I did bring out the uh, the mini and I also have the small. The leather is wearing fabulous, I am happy to say. I know, I know, I still haven't done a review on this bag, uh, but I have no issues with corner wear, none. No issues with scratches, no issues with nothing. This bag looks like I just got it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not lying when I tell you guys that the, the quality of uh, Lueve's uh, leather is out of this world. It blows away most of the other luxury fashion houses, in my opinion, when it comes to, the, to their leather. It is just absolutely amazing. I mean, look at this. This many, I have bumped many, many of times because I use it crossbody and no issues whatsoever. I, I love these bags, absolutely love these. So I've had the, the Lueve now for, or the small for over a year, maybe a year and a half now, something like that. And it, it looks exactly the same, like when I got it. And this bag has a tendency to slouch when I have all my stuff inside. And even then you can't see that it has like this funky sagging or anything like that either. I mean, that is just absolutely amazing so the the leather on these bags is out of this world it is absolutely amazing and it definitely blows away it blows many other fashion houses out of the water for sure uh, all right next question can the canvas louis vuitton gg or gucci bags match with elegant outfits or are they casual by all means um i i don't believe in shoulds uh, when it comes to to fashion or luxury. I think that whatever feels comfortable to someone they should do. For me personally, I wouldn't pair an elegant outfit with a canvas bag from Chanel, from Louis Vuitton or Gucci or any or anything like that. Uh, I just think that it's you know, I want something a little bit more understated. I want something a little bit more inconspicuous. Whenever I am wearing an elegant outfit, I want the outfit itself to speak for, you know, you know, to speak for, for the evening, if you will, instead of my bag. I don't want the bag to take away from, uh, from what I'm wearing. So I personally wouldn't end up using, um, a canvas bag uh, in an elegant setting, but I do think that there are some canvas pieces that you can easily dress up as well as dress down uh, into a more casual setting. Uh, but again, I don't believe in shoulds or should nots when it comes to bags and fashion or anything like that. If it makes you happy, by all means do it. Next question, where did you get the red sequence Versace bag? I've looked everywhere. All right, so I did bring it up so we have even more eye candy. So I've seen this bag named a few different things. Uh, Versace chain bag, Versace crystal bag, Versace palazzo chain crystal bag, you name it. So I don't know the exact name of it because it didn't come with the tag, uh, but these are actually crystals. So it's filled with red crystals and I love it. It's only on the front side, but I actually purchased it on a fashion file. I want to say it was February of this year, if I'm not mistaken, but I, I absolutely love this bag. Uh, the strap that it comes with, I don't use it. The strap is hideous. It doesn't match the bag at all. Uh, it's kind of like that cloth or that fabric um, webbing with some with some leather. It, it's hideous. <laughs> a hideous, hideous uh, strap. So normally I end up using a, um, a chain strap from Organize My Bags and I think it looks perfect, but obsessed with this bag, especially in the sun. It's like, ah! It's shiny. I mean, that's no surprise. You guys know how I feel about crystals. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know the exact name of it, but try finding it on the, or try looking for it as the Versace Palazzo crystal chain bag. I've seen it in black, um, baby blue, pink, and I want to say beige. Maybe that's wrong. I don't remember, but I've seen it in a few different colors. Uh, all right, next question. Do you ever get so hyped up about a bag purchase? Finally get it and immediately regret it. Yes, absolutely. 
This one might surprise some of you. Uh, so back in the day, not back in the day, but years ago, uh, when the Gucci, Gucci Soho Disco bag was extremely, extremely popular, I remember so many people were raving about it. I saw so many reviews on it. I mean, it was plastered all over Instagram, all over social media, and everyone always sang its praises. So I was really hyped about that bag. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I think it's beautiful. You know, it's simple. And um, camera bags in general aren't bags that I'm normally, I guess, uh, that I normally go for. Uh, but still, I was so like wrapped up about the bag, right? So uh, I literally had that bag. I'm not even kidding you for maybe a half an hour, maybe a half an hour. I was at the boutique, I bought it. As soon as I walked out, I took it out because I, I was that excited to start using it. I was literally going to swap all my stuff over while I was at the, you know, while I was at the store. And uh, I, I just really didn't like the little strap that it had because sometimes it flails in the wind. It doesn't have, it's flailing in the wind. It didn't have something to hold it down. and. I just, I don't know, I didn't feel the joy. I didn't, it was just not me. And I could, I mean, I appreciated it on so many people and I was so happy that many others loved this bag. Uh, and people still talk about it uh, to this day, but it just wasn't what I thought when I put it on. It was just immediately no, immediately no. So I, like I said, I probably had it for maybe a half an hour and I immediately returned it. So <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't have it for very long. I guess you can say I didn't even give it a chance, but at the same time, when I already knew, when I felt that way initially, it was only, I felt like it was only going to get worse. So definitely that one. How sad, right? Because it's such a beautiful bag. But I think camera bags in general just don't really, they don't really um, appeal to me. Um, all right, next question. What made you want to start filming YouTube videos? Did you have any expectations? Um, I wanted to just add my two cents. I wanted to share the good, the bad, and the ugly, not just, you know, only the good or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to give a different perspective and maybe help someone else out there uh, to maybe not do the same things that I did because, as you guys have heard me say many of times, uh, back in the day, I used to buy just to buy, and it bit me in the ass. So, yeah, uh, if I could help someone else, uh, to maybe look at an item differently than maybe they thought it would or however the case may be just to help out in general um, I just that's what really appealed to me as far as expectations <laughs> the, the only thing I was like who the hell cares what I have to say about bags I, st I still think that way like who cares like who am I you know I'm just some random so <laughs> I didn't have any expectations uh, I didn't think I would have as much fun doing it as I do. Uh, so that was a very nice surprise. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been, it's been kind of crazy because I've, I've been on YouTube now for nine or 10 years. I don't know, a, a long time, <laughs> a long, long time, but, uh, it is fun, especially when you find those like-minded individuals that get the crazy. So absolutely love that. Um, all right, next question. I wanted to ask you when you started luxury shopping years ago, how was the experience then in the shops? These days, with so many people in the shops and the lines just to get in, it doesn't seem luxury anymore to go there. I think shopping online today is better for those reasons. What are your thoughts? Uh, it is night and day compared to before or when I first started luxury shopping compared to now. You're right. It feels very... It feels like such a transaction now. It feels like get in, get out. Like there's no... Um, before it felt like like a day when you can indulge yourself. Like it was a pampering day. It felt like a spa day. Um, when you would go into the boutiques, at least in my experience, it felt very one-on-one. -on -one. It felt, um, it didn't feel rushed. It felt very comfortable. Uh, there was a, there was a certain atmosphere that just kind of added in a sense to the decadence of the, of the luxury goods that you were purchasing or looking at. Um, you know, so it was, I thought it was, it was completely different from what it is now because now, like, like you said, it's just, you're there, there are lines waiting to get in. It's so get in, get out. Like we have to process as many people as possible. Uh, so I do miss the old, 
atmosphere, the old ambiance, uh, whenever you would go into a luxury shop before. Uh, but the only thing I can say, even though I do appreciate uh, shopping online now because it's such a convenience, at the same time it has its con because you don't know what kind of item you're getting. I mean, sometimes, and in some cases, you have to cross your fingers and your toes to hope that the item that you purchased online doesn't have any scuffs or anything like that. Whereas before, when you would go into the boutique, you knew exactly the bag that you were looking at. You can inspect it as long as you wanted. And if it had this, if it had that, you could pick out another. Uh, so that's that's the biggest difference for sure uh, from, now, from, then and, from then to now is that you just don't don't know what kind of condition the item is going to be in, which is such a bummer because you definitely don't expect that when it comes to luxury goods, especially with the price points that they have, you would expect them to be you know, in, in sellable condition with no scratches, with no funky scuffs or anything like that. Uh, but that's just, um, that's unfortunately not the case. Uh, so definitely that. And I think that before you had a lot more choices. You could go into the boutique and you can actually ask for for example, a mini pochette, a Neverfull, uh, a, a key pouch, and they had them on, you know, they had them in stock. It's not like now, if you ask for a mini pochette, they're like, what? <laughs> you're out of your mind. <laughs> we don't have those. Uh, so uh, not only the uh, the inventory that they had before was a lot better uh, as far as in, uh, in store and uh, the experience definitely um, was just it's, I just, I just don't feel it's the same. So I don't get the same warm and fuzzies that I used to get now when I go into the boutique uh, that I did before. But what about you guys? How has it changed for you uh, from buying luxury goods uh, before to uh, how it is now? Let me know in the comments section down below. Uh, all right, next question. Uh, in terms of quality, is Louis Vuitton canvas any different from years ago, especially in Damien Ben? Okay, so Louis Vuitton canvas before was a lot thicker. Uh, you can definitely feel the thickness when it came to the older pieces. Whereas now, a lot of the canvas pieces are a lot more lightweight. They're a lot more pliable. Uh, now, even though I'm a big fan of the thicker canvas because I just, I really like that. I really like that feeling. I love the weight that it had as well. Um, the older pieces were also known for them to, the, the canvas to crack. So now, because they are a lot more pliable, because they are a lot more lightweight, you're not going to experience the same type of cracking canvas that you would have in older pieces. So that's one of the good things about the newer ones, but sometimes they feel flimsy. They can feel a little cheap, and I hate saying that word, uh, but it can feel a little cheap just because it just it has no good weight to it, whereas the other ones um, definitely did. Now, for Damia Ben, um, the biggest difference between Damia Ben now and then is that now uh, the leather that they have, the, the color treated leather, is a lot more matte, whereas before it was a little bit shinier. And uh, the reason why, I remember I spoke to a couple sales associates and they said that the reason why they ended up changing it is because before the older Damia Ben pieces with that leather, uh, it had a coating that the coating would often peel and you can definitely see it peeling on older pieces. Like if you go uh, on the pre-love market, you can see that peeling top coat of the treated leather and now they've kind of um, I think she said they not infused that's not the that's not the right word uh, but they changed it so that that way you have the same type of coating but it's not uh, as noticeable as it was before and it won't have that peeling that it was known for before either so that's a good thing that they changed it I like the matte Damia Ben uh, leather that they have now I like the shiny ones as well, the shiny uh, leather, uh, but I really like the fact that they ended up changing it from it peeling, being known for peeling. Uh, you can really see it on the Demi Ben compared to now. So um, again, back to the, the canvas, it was a lot thicker, but it was prone to cracking. Uh, and now it's a lot more lightweight, but it can feel a little, it can feel not as, not as, heavy, <laughs> not as luxurious. I don't know. I don't want to say that either, but uh, you get what uh, you get what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Next question. What has been your biggest handbag 180? You once said, for example, you said that you'd never buy Bal Balenciaga and now it's currently one of your favorites. Uh, my biggest handbag 180 is um, a fanny pack. 
I never thought in a million years, I think I've said it a million times before too, I will never buy a fanny pack. It, I don't get it, it's not my thing. Obviously fanny packs have been around for a long, 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 long time. I never got it, I never, they never appeal to me. And obviously now the Louis Vuitton bum bag is, <laughs> is one of my all time favorites. So uh, back what I said before, never, Never say never because you will end up eating your words one letter at a time. Uh, all right, next question. What bag or style of bag is over? Numerous people using it. Never full is over, but I think if you like something, you should rock it. Uh, I have a different take when it comes to bags or like someone also asked me, do you think luxury bags are over? Uh, I don't think any handbag is over. And the reason I say that is because I think that when you start to incorporate something being over, especially luxury goods, you can start to uh, categorize it into fast fashion and it can feel like fast fashion. You know, like fast fashion, those are things that I feel that, okay, well, this trend was really popular for five seconds, now it's completely over. Whereas handbags, I don't think they have that same, um, they don't fall into that same category. So I personally don't think that any handbag is over at any point in time. I don't care if I'm the last person on the planet to carry a bag that is quote unquote over, uh, I will still continue to use it. Just like as you said, if you enjoy something, you should rock it no matter what. It shouldn't matter what anybody thinks, what anybody says. If your favorite influencer, I hate that word, if your favorite influencer, your favorite YouTuber says, oh my God, it's totally over. Like, who cares? You know, if you like it, if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. All right, next question. Um, what do you think of the treated leather? I think it looks cheap. Okay, so the treated leather, like with the Palm Springs Mini, when you have the um, the black treated leather and the Damia Ben, I love it just because it gives uh, the the item, it makes the item that much more carefree, which I, I mean, totally appeals to me. When it comes to the uh, Vaquetta that is treated, I'm not the biggest fan of it either. And I think it's because, I mean, it already has kind of like an, like a, like an orangey tint to it. But the thing that I, I really don't like is the varnish because the varnish seems to be a lot brighter. It seems like it's very red uh, compared to items that aren't treated. And that to me, it just reminds me of a fake handbag, like fake handbags, uh, especially the Louis Vuitton handbags. Uh, they have that bright, bright red uh, varnish. So uh, that's the only thing that really puts me off, but I really appreciate that it makes the item that much more carefree, like the, you know, the black treated leather and the, um, and the, uh, the Damia Ben treated leather. So I like it and I don't, but that red varnish, I'm just, mm. <laughs> it's not really, uh, it's not really my favorite for sure. Uh, all right, next question. What all things do you need to consider while picking out canvas for a Louis Vuitton bag? Uh, okay, so I can't speak for anybody, but for myself, I definitely look at the structure of the bag and how many pieces of canvas are uh, make up that bag. Is it one continuous piece of canvas or is it multiple? Because if it is one continuous piece of canvas and uh, on those corners there, sometimes they end up folding over and those folds or those edges can be really, really pointy. And if there isn't something, either more canvas or leather, that is kind of housing that um, that little point, uh, that canvas can start to, to wear very, very quickly because there's nothing really to absorb the shock, if you will. There's nothing to help out with the abrasive surfaces or anything like that, especially because corners on handbags, uh, those seem to wear. I mean, that's an inevitable type of wear that you'll end up getting. But I think that when it comes to a continuous piece of canvas, if it is that folded corner, uh, you might notice wear and tear a lot faster than if it had something, you know, covering it. So that's definitely something that I look at, uh, as well as, as I said previously, if it's made up of multiple pieces of canvas, because if it's made of multiple pieces of canvas, again, there's a chance that it'll end up wearing a lot better as time goes by, because it's not really putting too much, uh, it's not, it's not, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's not really, um, putting too much strain on that canvas. So that's one other thing. Uh, when it comes to buying uh, pre-loved, I look for items or canvas pieces that don't have the cracking canvas because as we all know, cracked canvas is something that you can't take in for repair. Uh, so um, that's definitely something that I look for. But other than that, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty, 
Uh, I like seeing different colors on the on the canvas, especially the monogram, because sometimes the L and the V is a little bit more caramel. Other times it's a little bit more of like that green uh, khaki uh, hint to it. So I like seeing the differences in canvas pieces that I have in my collection, but definitely the structure, um, how many pieces of canvas make up that item and uh, if for any type of a cracked canvas on older pieces. But what about you guys? What are some things that, I'll, that you look for when it comes to a canvas uh, handbag from Louis Vuitton? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question, how do you like the carry bag hook? All right, so this is another item I don't believe I have shared with you, but this is the carry bag hook. Uh, the company was incredibly kind and they gifted this to me, I wanna say probably about four months ago, but it is a bag hook. Uh, it's available in different finishes. You can either go for gold. They also have this available in rose gold as well as silver. And uh, I love the simplicity that it has. It fits uh, very nicely inside of my smaller handbags as well as obviously my larger handbags handbags but it does come with a little pouch uh, they are a little bit on the pricier side I'm not gonna lie they come in at $105 uh, so just uh, just keep that in mind but uh, it opens up like so and you're able to set this down on the table and then hold your bag right there but I do love um, I do love the look of it uh, I have used it quite a bit. I actually pulled a couple of details just to give you guys those details very quickly. Uh, so as I said, the uh, the bag hook comes in at $105. Uh, the yellow one is gold plated. It holds 15.4 pounds. It's portable and a foldable design. Uh, tried and tested on delicate bags. High quality, scratch resistant, top quality metal. It has an anti-slip pad for increased stability and grip. It comes with a signature box and a suede dust bag that you guys just saw you guys didn't see the box uh, and they were created in Sweden so as I said uh, it's available in different finishes and uh, I've been able to carry this inside of my smallest handbags and I haven't had any issues it does have some good weight to it so uh, as this stated it holds up to 15.4 pounds so you don't have to worry that it's going to slip off or anything like that especially because it does have the anti-slip pads um, but that is the uh, that is the the purse the purse hook uh, it does have the shiny hardware here and then this is a little bit more um, not matte but it's definitely not as shiny as the sides uh, but there we go. But anywho, that does it for our MMQA video. We got through a lot of questions today, right? I love it. But I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to answer your questions. And as always, I welcome your thoughts and your opinions on anything that we discuss. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.